Last week I explored the idea of having an exhaust port at the top of the compressed air engine uh, cylinder to allow any trapped air to escape via this valve. However, the dual cam system and dual spring system just proved to be too much friction uh, for the engine to run past. So instead of increasing the efficiency, the engine didn't run at all. Now out of all of the four main versions of compressed air engines that I've built, the version 3 engine has been by far the best. So by taking a step back in complexity and combining all of the knowledge I've gained from all of my four versions of compressed air engines, I've come out with a version 5 compressed air engine. Now as mentioned last week, I will be making the 3D printer STL files available for the public to download for free. Uh, they will be uploaded to Thingiverse, but before you click off this video, I'm guessing you want to see the engine run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the build process in a bit more detail, seeing as uh, you'll probably want to see how I build it uh, if you want to build your own. So let's get building. I'm not going to be running through the 3D printing settings in this video as they might be subject to change. So if you want to see what settings I use and what is required then please go visit the Thingiverse page where I've written a full description of how to print these files. So let's start by sanding the cylinder using 1200 grit wet and dry paper. Cylinder and piston need to be sanded to be smooth because I recommend using PLA plastic which can't be acetone smoothed like ABS. I like to cut a strip of about 12 to 13 millimeters wide and attach it to a file to ensure the surface ends up as flat as possible. This sanding process can take quite a while, so be patient. Once all the horizontal layer lines are gone, it's time to start sanding the piston. Now sanding the piston correctly is very important to the engine's performance, so take your time by making minor adjustments. Depending on what color filament you use, you might be able to see these unsanded areas easily, so keep sanding until these are gone. It's also important to sand the corners of the piston, as the printer can occasionally leave tiny bumps in this area. During the sanding process, make sure to occasionally insert the piston into the cylinder in the correct orientation, and hold it up to a light to check for gaps. It's important to make a note not to sand these areas where the light leaks through, as this can cause air to leak through and reduce the efficiency of the engine. Once the piston fits into the cylinder, it's time to move on. Make sure to remember the front of the crankcase is the end with the larger diameter, and the front of the cylinder is where the push rod goes. Use some CA or super glue to attach these two parts together in the correct orientation. Whilst the glue is drying or setting, sand all the main faces of the push rod until smooth. You may notice that one side of the push rod has a cutout and this must be orientated towards the front of the engine. The fit between the push rod and the push rod channel should be loose enough that it falls out due to gravity and if it doesn't, then you must continue sanding. Press fit the crankshaft into the main bearing using the crankshaft press tool and a vise, clamp or other non-impact force. Hold the engine upside down to prevent the push rod from falling out and insert the bearing into the crankcase. If the fit between the bearing and your crankcase is too tight, you can use the crank press tool and force it in using a vise or a clamp. If the fit is too loose, you may need to add some glue to fix the bearing in position. Next, cut some bushings from some 2mm inside diameter brass tube to the correct width of the connecting rod and deburr the edges with a file. Then press the bushings into the connecting rod. I like to use a 1.5mm hex driver to ensure the bushings are straight. Begin threading an M2 by 10mm bolt into the piston. Then insert the connecting rod and tighten until the bolt head is flush with the side of the piston. Insert the piston and connecting rod into the cylinder making sure to have the bolt head facing towards the rear of the engine. Then use another M2 by 10 mm bolt to attach the connecting rod to the crankshaft. Insert an M2 by 20 mm bolt into the pushrod channel and thread it into the 3D printed pushrod part. But don't tighten this all the way down as it needs to be adjusted at a later point. So that's the majority of the engine constructed. Uh, have the piston up here, the bearing, the crankshaft, the connecting rod, and if I turn the engine slowly, you should be able to see the push rod open the valve just about there and then shut. So everything's working well. The piston is still a bit rough, it's not running completely smooth uh, because I need to lubricate it. Uh, I just use uh, WD-40 silicon spray uh, lubricant. Make sure it's a silicon lubricant um, and that seems to do the job. Then after a bit of uh, getting the engine to run, it starts to loosen up a bit and run in quite well. So moving on to the cylinder head, uh, I'm aiming to design two different cylinder heads, uh, but for now I've only 3D printed one of the designs, 
and that's because I'm going to be mounting this engine on a remote control car. Now the difference between the engine being mounted on a car versus on the remote control plane that I've produced in the past is that I want to have the engine mounted away from the uh, air source or the plastic bottle. So I want to try and use some PVC tubing between the engine and the bottle. So I found out about these press fit pneumatic fittings which uh, I can simply press the PVC tube into there and it grips it nice and tight and apparently these are rated up to 20 bar of pressure which is plenty for this engine. So this is the cylinder head which it will thread into and I've designed it such that the ball valve will be at the bottom of this small threaded fitting and uh, also the o-ring wheel. So what I'll do is I'll place the o-ring in like so, push it down to the bottom and make sure it fits in nice and snugly. So now you should be able to see the o-ring in the underside of that valve system and I just need to insert the pellet gun 6mm ball bearing just in the top there and then this adapter which already has an inserted o-ring uh, it comes supplied with the adapter just simply threads into that 3D printed part. Now I've designed the thread actually into the 3D printed part uh, which is also why it requires such a small print nozzle of 0.2mm uh, to print such a fine thread but it threads quite nicely in there and with a tight fit that should seal. So what I need to do now is cut out a gasket for the top of the engine out of some 0.5mm thick rubber sheeting which I have right here and then I can bolt down the cylinder head and then we need to attach this to the air supply. I found this particular rubber sheet on eBay by searching 0.5mm rubber sheet. Then I cut it into the shape and size of the cylinder head. A hole needs to be cut for the pushrod to pass through and make sure it doesn't rub or catch on the pushrod bolt. Then attach the cylinder head by using four M2 by 10 mm bolts, but don't tighten it all the way down as it has to be removed to adjust the pushrod later. I then used another pneumatic fitting in the 3D printed bottle cap and sealed this to the nozzle of the bottle using a two mm thick rubber sheet cut into the shape of a washer. The propeller adapter requires a small washer cut from 0.5 mm rubber sheet to prevent the propeller from slipping. This is really important because the propeller acts as a flywheel and the engine won't run properly if it slips. Line up the propeller adapter with a notch on the crankshaft and attach the propeller using the propeller washer and an M3 by 20 mm bolt. To pressurize the bottle, you will need a Presta valve which is designed for tubeless tires, a bottle, a drill and a six mm drill bit. Drill a six mm hole in the bottom of the bottle and deburr the hole using a file or sandpaper. Using a wire rod or metal coat hanger, insert the valve into the bottle as shown. Then attach the nut and tighten for a good seal. Now it's time to get the engine running. So the reason why you don't want to clamp the cylinder head down uh, too hard on the first attempt is that you need to make sure that the pushrod uh, bolt is just the right length for the engine to run. So I'm just going to give you a quick example of what happens if the pushrod isn't long enough. So I have the air supply in the bottle which is hanging down below the desk. Uh, that's all pressurized so if I spin it up you can hear it doesn't sound like much air is going into the engine so it's not turning over. You can hear the valve opening very slightly but it's not letting enough air in for the engine to properly spin. So now I'm going to show you what happens if the pushrod is slightly too long. So if the pushrod is slightly too long, when I put the cylinder head on top of the cylinder, the pushrod will open the valve too early. So basically when the cam is at the minimum diameter and the pushrod is as low as possible, if I push it on, you'll hear it's opening the valve when it shouldn't be. So that means that the pushrod is too long. So let's adjust it to roughly where the right height should be. So I believe this is the right length of the push rod, so I'm going to push the cylinder head onto the top of the cylinder. And we've got no air leaking out, which means that it's not too long. Now, if I spin up the engine, if it turns over, then that means that it's the right length, obviously. So in three, two, wait, where's the stop? Three, two, one.
So that works well. The bottle is at very low pressure now, uh, so that's why it's not running very fast, which is probably a good thing seeing as I'm holding on to it. What I'm going to do now that I know that the push rod is the right length is just add a little bit more lubricant and then clamp down the cylinder head fully. Okay, so I've fully clamped down the cylinder head now. Uh, try not to tighten it too much because it might strip the plastic out of the cylinder and that means you'd have to rebuild the whole bottom half of the cylinder and crankshaft again, which is a, which is a bit of a pain. So just sort of tight enough so that it uh, makes a good seal. So what I'm gonna do is pump it up now to a bit of a higher pressure than what it was and then run it in a bit. So I've run the engine in about four or five times and by running in I mean I pump the bottle up to about 40 psi and then spin the propeller until it stops. Now the first few runs it ran down to about 20 psi uh, and then the last few ones started to get a bit uh, lower pressure run which is quite good. Now you can tell that there's absolutely zero pressure in this bottle. I've completely depleted it of air. I'm just going to show you an example of how low pressure this can run at. So this is a two litre plastic bottle and this is just a regular hand bike pump, I'm not sure what they're called, it's just a bike pump. So if I show you this, I'm going to go one and two and then so that's how low of a pressure it will run at. Now this bottle is still squeezable, you know that would probably run on well some coke if you shook it up a bit. So that's how low pressure this will just about turn over on. I'll give it four pumps this time. So one, two, three, four. I can still squeeze that bottle. Okay, 60 psi in three, two, one. Okay, that's 60 psi in three, two, one. Another cool thing about this engine is because the pump is always connected to the air tank, uh, I should be able to pump more air in as the engine is running and get it to run continuously as long as I put in my energy obviously. 
So I'm going to give it a bit of pressure to start with, and then we'll give this a go. So let's see if I pump in more air, how much quicker I can get it to go. When it's just about to stop, I'll pump in some more air. <laughs> Super low RPMs. Pretty impressive it can run at that low RPM and pressure. Just one pump and it lasts for like another five seconds or so, five, ten seconds. So that's it for the version 5 compressed air engine. A lot of you are probably wondering what's the difference between this and the version 3 engine. And I'm just going to quickly run you through those differences. Number one, the crankshaft is completely different. It only requires one bearing at the front of the engine and the cam design is built into the crankshaft. So the push rod, instead of running up the rear of the engine, is now running up the front of the engine. Now there's also this modified cylinder head, which allows me to mount the pressure source uh, separately from the engine and I was trying to find out a way of trying to glue PVC tubing to PLA plastic but I couldn't really find a, a good source so this press fit pneumatic uh, fitting uh, makes my life a lot easier and it simply threads into the 3D printed part. As I mentioned earlier I will be making or designing a uh, cylinder head which will be able to fit to a plastic bottle. This is the version 4 engine version. Um, however, I haven't yet got round to designing and printing it. So, uh, as of this video, I haven't got a tutorial of how to build that section. But it will be up on the Thingiverse page soon. Talking about Thingiverse, you can download all the 3D printer STL files for this engine from the Thingiverse link down in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more information about uh, various things behind the scenes and extra information of my videos then head over to my patreon page that link will also be down in the description below a huge huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me uh, you guys really make these weekly videos possible and i couldn't do it without you so if you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up if you're new to my channel and you enjoy my videos please click subscribe and i'll see you next week goodbye <laughs>